Ekin Richard, King of England from 1377 to 1399. He is the last ruler of the Angevin branch of the Plantagenet dynasty. Richard's father was Edward, the Prince of Wales, nicknamed the Black Prince. But the Prince of Wales died on 8th of January 1376, when his father, King Henry III. Since he died while Edward was still alive, he was only 10 years old and died during the reign of Edward III, Edward II's grandson. Richard became crown prince along with the Principality of Wales and his father's other titles, Grandfather III. With Edward's death on June 21, 1377, he ascended to the throne of the Kingdom of England. Richard is the second son of Edward, Prince of Wales, and Joan, Countess of Kent, who was also crown prince. His father, Edward, made a name for himself as a good commander and soldier during the Hundred Years' War, and especially at the Battle of Poitiers in 1356. Edward, who fought in various battles, contracted dysentery during a war in Spain in 1370. He returned to England the following year, but did not fully recover, and his illness relapsed from time to time. The Duke of Kent, Thomas Holland, and the Earl of Salisbury, among the English high nobles, competed with each other to marry Joan, Countess of Kent. But in 1361, Joan married Edward, Prince of Wales, a cousin of King Edward I. However, since Joan was a close relative of Edward, this marriage was only possible with papal permission. Richard, the couple's second child, was born in a monastery in Bordeaux, within the territory of the Principality of Aquitaine, which was under British administration. During this birth, three European kings, King of Castile, King of Navarre, and King of Portugal, were in this monastery. This is depicted in a two-part painting called the Wilton Epiphany Diptych. In 1371, Richard's older brother, Edward Anglomelu, died and Richard became his father's heir. In 1376, his father Edward, the Black Prince, died after being in bed for a long time with recurrent dysentery. To prevent Richard's uncle, John Gaunt, from usurping the throne, the courtiers and English administrators immediately gave Richard his father's titles and the title of Prince of Wales as heir apparent. On 21st June 1377, Henry III, King of England and Richard's grandfather was born. Edward died. When I was 10 years old, Seth. Richard ascended the throne as King of England and Ireland and was coronated on 16th of July. Again, it was decided not to give John Gaunt royal powers. From then on until adulthood, his reign was vested in a series of regency councils, of which John Gaunt was not a member. Although not members of these councils, John Gaunt and his younger brother, Thomas Woodstock, Duke of Buckingham, continued to play an important role in the country's politics. But the aside, as Richard grew up, his friends, especially Simon de Burley and Aubrey de Vere, 10th Earl of Oxford, gained significant political power. In line with the wishes of these advisors, English armies fought unsuccessful wars on the French mainland between 1377 and 1381. The financing required to finance these wars was provided by the head tax, which was urgently collected three times separately. These emergency head taxes hit the poor and rural peasants hard. It made them uneasy about the state. In 1380, the Regency councils were abolished and the sea. Although Richard was not yet 21 years old and considered an adult, he was given absolute royal powers. The first danger to the kingdom came in the so-called Peasants' Revolt, in which opponents of the poll tax, which every Englishman was required to pay a fixed value three times immediately, took part in. The rural population in England was decimated and reduced by the Great Plague epidemic called the Black Death, which occurred in the period 1348-1350, and therefore, the rural agricultural workers who survived this epidemic gained the power to demand very high wages and to challenge the privileged owners if their demands were not met. The peasants did not own land, 
but were serfs to the noble manor owners and the church, and therefore they paid a part of the product, such as tithe tax, to these landlords as a tax. 2. When Richard came to the throne, this rural agricultural worker community was thriving. Richard's war against France and the extra young man to finance this war. The central government's immediate and constant collection of head tax three times from every Englishman, without making any distinction between rich and poor, was a great burden on the peasants and the poor who were starting to gain power again. These groups wanted not to pay this head tax. This uneasiness turned into a rebellion due to the latest head tax in 1381. Peasants' revolts first emerged in rural southeast England, in the counties of Kent and Essex, and quickly spread across the surface of England. From late May 1381, rebellious peasants marched on London and gathered at Blackheath, a rural open air in London, under their leaders Watt Tyler, John Ball, and Jack Straw. Taking action from here, the peasant rebels burned the city mansion of John of Gaunt, called the Savoy Palace. They killed Simon Sudbury, who was both Chancellor of the Exchequer and Archbishop of Canterbury, and Robert Hales, who was the King's High Treasurer. The abolition of all laws dating back to the Middle Ages that considered peasants as serfs became one of their main demands. King II Richard had reached the age of 14, and the courtiers had taken him under guard in the Tower of London. However, the state did not have the power to suppress the peasant rebels, and it was necessary to enter into negotiations with the rebels. The young king entered into negotiations with the leaders of the rebels on 13 and 14th June, acceding to the rebels' demands, and the rebels were granted charters of freedom from serfdom. However, the rebels, angered by this lenient behavior of the state administration, increased their demands and continued to plunder the city. The next day, while the king was negotiating with the leader of the rebels, Watt Tyler, a brawl broke out with the king's men, and William Walworth, the mayor of the city of London, knocked Watt Taylor off his horse and killed him. But before this news could spread, the mayor of the city of London's men laid siege to the countryside where the rebels were encamped. 2. After Richard made it clear that the rebels would not be punished due to his very careful and determined behavior, the leaderless rebels began to disperse and return to their villages, but I, I. Richard did not keep his word. He took back his certificatus of freedom from serf dom and even went back on his promise to forgive the rebels. He marched on the Essex region. He suppressed all the rebel groups there. On 28th of June, the last group of rebels in Billerique was eliminated. This absolutist attitude of the king pleased the royalists. But the Kai. Due to this success, Richard gained a temperament that did not care about the people and the difficulties that the people faced and was indifferent to the troubles that the people suffered. Although the Council of Regents ended in 1380, second, Richard is not considered an adult. I-4 became Holy Roman Germanic Emperor in 1382. He married Anne of Bohemia, daughter of Karl and his wife Elizabeth of Pomerania. The agreement for this marriage was signed on May 2nd, 1381. The British did not like the new queen. England went to great expense to ensure this marriage. Because of this marriage, the establishment of a military coalition against France in Europe was desired and expected. But this military coalition did not emerge. Richard and Anne of Bohemia had no children from this marriage. In 1294, Anne of Bohemia died in a new plague epidemic in England, and Richard grieved greatly for his dead wife. Michael de la Pole. Richard's marriage to Anne of Bohemia played a leading role in the diplomatic negotiations. He therefore established close relations with Richard and gained significant political power as the king approached adulthood, that is, the age of 21. Michael de la Pole was the son of an ordinary merchant family and was therefore despised by the nobility. 
Richard made him Secretary of the Exchequer in 1383, and two years later elevated him to the peerage and gave him the title Earl of Suffolk. Another favorite of the king was Robert de Vere, son of the Earl of Oxford, to whom Richard granted the title Duke of Ireland in 1386. The historian of the day, Thomas Walsingham, wrote, It reports homosexual relations between Richard and Robert de Vere. When the war with France began, major problems arose. The majority of his courtiers were against this war and wanted to negotiate with France and reach an agreement. John Gaunt and his brother, the Duke of Buckingham, wanted a major military expedition to protect the lands under British rule in France. The great military expedition against France, which the Archbishop of Norwich, Henry Le Despensé, organized and called a new crusade, failed due to the good resistance of the French. Thereupon, sa. Richard launched an expedition to attack the Kingdom of Scotland, which was an ally of France and located in the north of the British island. This military campaign also failed, and Richard's army had to turn back without a single serious armed conflict with the Scots. But meanwhile, France could not provide any military support to its ally, Scotland. French armies had to deal with a serious rebellion in Ghent. As a result of these failures, King Richard and his uncle John Gaunt fell out. John Gaunt left England and went to Spain to enforce his rights over the Kingdom of Castile through military conflicts. King Richard bestowed the additional title of Duke of Gloucester on his young uncle, the Duke of Buckingham. But this could not change his young uncle's attitude towards him. The new Duke of Gloucester and Richard Fitzalan, the Earl of Arundel, began to lead those against the king among the courtiers. Instead of decreasing the intensity of the conflict with France, the war situation became more and more urgent in 1386. The Secretary of the Treasury wanted to collect very high taxes to cover war expenses, but the Parliament opposed this and demanded that the Treasury Minister be dismissed. They also stated that they would not accept the new fiscal year budget and taxes before this result emerged. This Parliament, later known as the Wonderful Parliament, was supported by the Duke of Gloucester and the Earl of Arundel and governed by non-noble parliamentarians. After the Parliament asked the King to cut palace expenses, the Saxe, Richard declared that he will not remove even a single palace kitchen servant from kitchen work in compliance with Parliament's wishes to cut expenses. But Parliament took action and threatened to take out King Richard. Fearing that this threat would come true, Richard was forced to fire Secretary of the Treasury de Pole from his job. In order to control the financial situation in the Parliament, a Treasury Commission was established temporarily to manage the state and kingdom finances for a period of one year. Richard II began traveling in England between February and November to gather supporters against this Parliament that opposed his absolute despotic powers, decisions, and administration. He appointed his friend de Vere as Lord Justice of Chester, thus attempting to establish a center of anti-parliamentary politics in northwest England centered in Chester. At the same time, Richard also influenced the Chief Justice of the state, Robert Tresillian, to obtain a judgment that Parliament's conduct was unlawful and that these parliamentary acts constituted treason. But when King Richard returned to London from his travels, his opponents, the Duke of Gloucester, the Earl of Arundel, and Thomas de Beauchamp, the Earl of Warwick, united in support of the King, which included de Pole, the former Chancellor of the Exchequer, de Vere, Tresillian, the Lord Mayor of the City of London, and the Archbishop of York. They accused him and his supporters, demanding that a group be tried for treason against the state, and they applied for this accusation to be tried by the Supreme Court in Parliament. The nobles who made this application were henceforth called applicant lords. This court slowed down the proceedings, as the king was waiting for de Vere to arrive with an army that he had recruited and formed in Chester and the county of Cheshire. But these three noble nobles joined forces with John Gaunt's son, the Earl of Derby, and Thomas de Mowbray, Earl of Nottingham. This group later became known as the Applicant Lords. 
This group formed an army loyal to them and marched against De Vere's army coming from Cheshire on 20th of December 1387. The two armies engaged in the Battle of Radcot Bridge. The army of the Lord's Appellant was victorious against De Vere's royalist army. De Vere also had to flee England. For this reason, Richard had to impose the charge of treason against the state and the parliament to pass the trial as the Supreme Court. As a result of a trial held in Parliament in February 1388, the Mayor of London and Judge Tresillian were found guilty of treason and were executed. De Vere and De La Pole, who fled the country, were also found guilty of treason and sentenced to death in absentia. This Parliament was not content with merely prosecuting the persons named in the Lord's Applicants' list for treason against the state. They also tried and executed a few of King Richard's close supporters, whose names were not on the list for treason against the state. This parliament was henceforth known as the Cruel Parliament. Thus, the entire group of royal supporters that Richard had gathered around the king, who supported and implemented absolute despotic rule, was eliminated.